Uh, hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. This is a little bit different video. I just turned the radio on a few minutes ago and noticed that uh, 40 meters was very active with very good signals. So here we are, it's about 8 o'clock at night and I want to just give you a taste of what some of these signals uh, sound like. Again, I'm recording off this little webcam, and the speakers are over here. That's where the sound is coming out of from the radio. So you're actually hearing, uh, you know, a webcam uh, sound, audio. So it's not quite as good as what I hear sitting right in between the speakers. But here we go. I'm going to switch you over to the Flex Radio. It's up and running. And I'll uh, get you switched over to that screen in a second. There we go. And let's turn the volume on. By the way, uh, the neat thing again about the flex is you can see the signals. And there's some real strong ones coming in tonight. Uh, so let's listen to a few of them. I'll dial across the band and give you a little sampling. Anyway, you can see the big signals tonight on the flex. Uh, I mean, 40 meters just exploded. Can't tell you why, but it certainly did. Let's uh, take a look at some solar data just out of curiosity. I'll open up that solar data. really not that good. We've got uh, solar flux at uh, 74 and an A, uh, A5, or I believe that's right. Yeah, A5. It's not really that great. But for some reason, uh, we're really receiving some strong signals right now. What I'm looking at is the solar data right here. And here is the night time. And one of the reasons why it may be so good right now is I'm right on the terminator almost between night and day. Pretty close to going into the terminator right now. I'm about right here where you see that X on the screen, that cross. And the terminator is right here, so um, that may be why I'm getting such strong signals. Is I'm on the terminator. And you can see me adjusting the filter right now. The filter uh, bandwidth is just by visual sight. So uh, here I am grabbing the edge of it. Let's narrow it. And you can see I can put it directly on the size of the bandwidth of the signal and try to cut out some of the noise so 
In other words, if I expanded it out here, whoop, if I expanded it out here, I would start picking up noise out here where there's no actual signal. And you can hear that noise now. But if I narrow up the filter, I get rid of that noise. Ham <laughs> radio operators talk about everything, including okra. back on my smiling face again. Just hang on a second. I've got to get some things out of the way here and we'll get you back over here and there we go. Mm -hmm. That's one of the neat things about the Flex Radio is that you can visually see the signals. Now I'm going to scan through some other bands like 20 meters, uh, even 10. I'll put it on 10 for a minute and you you can basically tell if the band is opening open instantly just by looking at the screen. Uh, you're either going to see signals or you won't see signals. And of course you know exactly where they are. There's no uh, dialing a knob until you come across something, you know, and then uh, have to dial it again to come across another one. You see the signals. And you can make a determination of the strength of the signal before you dial in on it or scroll in on it. And I'm just using a little uh, wireless mouse to do that uh, on the screen. So it makes it real easy to find QSOs visually. And of course the filter size and the modes are all available on the screen, so it makes it real easy to get around and uh, just do whatever mode you want to do, whether it's CW or digital or whatever else, just by selecting uh, the mode on the screen, which is, let me uh, get you back over there, which is uh, right. right over here. You can see lower sideband, upper sideband. Uh, CW lower, CW upper, AM, uh, digital upper and lower. Uh, if you click that, what happens is it uh, turns on the uh, connection to the audio called the virtual audio cable here. You can see it's lit up now. So it's connected directly into the computer on a particular COM port. And uh, that way I can run software, third-party software, and decode the digital signals just by switching it here. It will also decode them in lower sideband or upper sideband. Uh, it, it does it the same way. But if I switch to that, you see it turned off the virtual audio cable. I have to come over here and click it, turn it back on. All right, but in using these digital modes, it automatically sets up the radio with a three kilohertz wide signal. 
and uh, basically gets it all set up ready to go for digital, whether uh, lower sideband or upper sideband. So you can see it set it right there to three and turned on the connection, the virtual audio cable, and if I was going to work, go on down here to 760, let you hear that for a second. And I could be working JT65 right now. Again, strong signals tonight, even on the digital modes. If I move down a little bit further to 70000, there's somebody actually talking on top of the digital signals. That's not very good form. But anyway, these are PSK31 digital signals that you're hearing in the background right now. You can see them right here, but you can also see that there's someone talking here. Let's see if we can hone in on that person, go to the lower sideband, see if we can find him. Yeah. Somebody uh, probably from South America. That's a normal frequency for uh, other countries to transmit on. Uh, the band plans for other countries are different than the United States in s some aspects. And uh, so he's talking down here on 7.075 probably doesn't realize that he is on the uh, common uh, JT65 uh, and PSK31 frequencies. Uh, or if he does know, he doesn't care. But anyway, uh, that's why we're getting the interference there. It's somebody from another country that's coming in tonight. Uh, <clears throat> most of the time, propagation won't permit that to happen, and uh, generally those frequencies are clear for you to receive and transmit. But every once in a while propagation gets uh, to be pretty good, and uh, signals start coming in from all over the place and interfere with those digital signals. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. Oh, wait a minute. I was going to show you uh, 10. That's right. I was going to jump up over here and show you some other uh, uh, frequencies. So uh, here's 20 meters. Hang on a second. And here's 20 meters. And you can see there's a signal there, but it's not as good as 40, is it? Surely isn't as good as 40. There's one, there's some weak ones right here. Actually, you can look at the waterfall and see some of the signals. And there's a pretty good one right there. Let's turn the... Some coming in on 20. Victor X-Ray 7 is in uh, Mexico. So there's a few on 20. Let's jump to 10. Just out of curiosity. And see what we get. And there are signals, believe it or not, coming in on 10 right now. So there's a 10 meter coming in at 8 o'clock at night. Some kind of unusual propagation today. Very unusual for solar minimum conditions. 
almost some sporadic E coming in right now, what we call sporadic E. Not very many signals, but that one's coming in pretty good. Anyway, let's turn this off yes. and get you back over here. And so you never really know. You know, I hear guys saying all the time, uh, oh, nothing happening on the bands. Uh, can't hear anybody. Well, it's not always true. Even during solar minimum, uh, you'll hit some days uh, where the propagation, for one reason or another, is... Uh, pretty darn good even during solar minimum. So I hear a lot of old timers, I'm just giving it up for the, I ain't going to get on the air for the next uh, till winter time. Or some of them even say, I'm going to put my equipment up for the next three years, you know, that kind of stuff, whether they're kidding or not, I don't know. But, uh, because, prop, because they don't hear any signals. But I can tell you, I can get on most days and at some time during the day, there'll be this kind of propagation going on. That may not last very long. It only lasts for 30 minutes or maybe an hour. Sometimes even less than that, 15 or 20 minutes. And then it's gone. Uh, but it's worthwhile to get on and uh, look around and see what the bands are doing, even when you think... <laughs> There's not doing any good, like that 10 meter was open for to somewhere, uh, which is highly unusual during solar minimum. So anyway, with that said, I hope you kind of enjoyed some of the good signals coming in. And uh, as a usual, I wish you clear skies in 73. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later. Nice.